So today I'm gonna to make a New England IPA. We are going to do a ton of hop additions. Uh, if you didn't already see my video on how the recipe was made, um, there's a link right here. So moving forward, I'm gonna to try to do like three videos per brew. So I'm gonna do a recipe formulation, the actual brew, and then the review. So go ahead and subscribe uh, to get the updates of when the review is posted and check back for the recipe. Um, I think it'll give you guys kind of an idea of what goes on in my head when I'm trying to make a new recipe from scratch. Uh, all my recipes are pretty original. Um, so, you know, I don't like to put my name on things that I didn't make. I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so we're using RO water today. I'm gonna to throw in seven gallons, and um, I'm also gonna throw in my water additions while I'm here. Um, it is so hot, and these uh, water jugs have been out here for a while, so hopefully they're pretty warmed. Oh, this lid is so hot I can barely touch it. Well, it looks like seven. Okie dokie. For our water additions, just throw them in this little guy. Um, so we are doing the Hoppy Nipa profile in Brewfather. Check out my video before this to kind of get an idea of how I built this recipe and how my brain works kind of. We settled on 8.1 grams of calcium chloride, 2.8 grams of Epsom salt, 2.8 grams of gypsum. The scale does not read point grams, so we're just gonna round up or down. So I'm gonna do eight grams of calcium chloride. Oh, and I'm starting with RO water. So I'm basically starting at zero. So I've gotta build the whole profile by hand. So three grams of gypsum and three grams of Epsom salt. Cool, okay, so that is all we're gonna throw in our water. And I'm going to light this with my lighter that I dropped. Hopefully I have enough propane. Catch. There we go. Okay, so for our malt bill, uh, we are doing very, very pared down. We're only using two pounds of oatmeal and 12 pounds of two-row. I'm using the RAR two-row. Um, I wish I had a scoop, but oh well. All right, let's see if that'll do it. That was nine ounces off. One ounce over. Okay, we're gonna mill this separate. Not gonna throw my one minute oats into the mill because it'll jam it up. So this thing has two pounds, 10 ounces. So I'm just gonna take 10 ounces out of this guy. Throw it in a mason jar. <laughs> that didn't quite work. Okay, so that's our 10 ounces out of there. I'm gonna actually just toss some more in because I spilled a bunch. We're just gonna throw this in the mash soon. You should see this floor after I do this every single time. It's terrible. So I'm gonna mill it pretty fine today. Um, just under a credit card width. Okay, okay. And again, I'm not milling the oats because they are already flaked and basically oatmeal. One thing I've learned over the years about milling is always test your mill with a handful of grain so you can make sure it'll actually work. Because it sucks lifting an entire thing filled with grain if it's not gonna work. All right, we basically have flour happening right there. Flowery. 
Okay, so we've hit our strike water temperature. We're at about 159. Um, hot, hot, hot. Alrighty. Our malt bill on this is 12 pounds of two row and two pounds of um, quick oats. That's it. Isn't that fun? I love it. It's gonna be super light. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw my oats in first because why not? Literal Quaker oats. And now it smells like oatmeal. And 12 pounds of Turo. There's clumps. I milled this really, really fine because uh, last brew I didn't hit my targets. So I'm just like... Flour. Flour is the consistency we're going for now. Okay, I'm going to throw my lid back on. Okay, so I'm gonna go see if I've got a Fernie pad in the garage so I can insulate this guy. Okay, cool. So, insulated enough, and I'm gonna set a timer for an hour. Okay, so we are at 146 right now um so it fell a bit but i think that's gonna be fine i did not grab my refractometer but i will do that in a second after i do this malt so we're at about six gallons right now Ew, it's so, like, look at this. So this um, brew is super light in color. It's like nothing. Um, I hope we are going to hit our OG, or our pre-boil at least. So, oh shit, this is a strong beer. Really? Um, so our pre-boil gravity is looking like it's 13 and a half bricks. Let's see what that means. Mm. Brew father, guide me on my journey. 13.5 is 1.057, and our pre boil is supposed to be 1.058, so I'm gonna call that a win. I think so. I'm gonna call it a win. Based on my previous performance lately, I'm just like, if I get close, I'm happy. <laughs> also, my boil volume is supposed to be 6.4 gallons, but it's Six, but I think I'm gonna get more out of this bag that's down here. So yeah, um, our original gravity is gonna be 1.063. I think we'll hit it. Um, I'm gonna light my uh, my burner and get this boiling. We're gonna get this going. Um, if this actually decides to give me some more work, I'm gonna toss it in just to give us more volume. Okay, we are at our boil and we're working on a hot break. So this beer is not getting any hop additions in the boil. We're only doing the hop stand and the dry hop since it's a NEPA. I'm just going to set a timer for an hour and go chill. If you watched the previous video, you kind of saw how I came up with my hop profile. Um, so this beer is going to be a lot different from what I usually do. I usually do boil hops. We're doing no boil hops in this one. So we're gonna boil for 60 minutes. And then when we start to chill, once we get down to 174 degrees, which is gonna be really hard to keep it there, but I'm gonna try my hardest. Um, what we're gonna do is do a whirlpool edition or a hop stand edition. Um, hop stand kind of makes more sense because I'm not going to be physically stirring it. You know, I just listened to a brewlosophy a podcast about the flavor difference between bagging your hops and letting them go loose. So I think on this one, I'm going to just throw the hops in loose. Um, they're all pellet hops, so hopefully it doesn't clog my valve. We'll see. I might be cursing myself later. So we're going to try to get as much delicious, hoppy smell and flavor out of these guys as we can. So our hop bill is 
um, only in Whirlpool. So we're gonna do three ounces of the HBC 586, which is this one. This is a super mango-y um, hop that's kind of experimental right now. Um, we're gonna do one ounce of Galaxy and we're gonna do one ounce of Amarillo. So that's gonna give us an IBU of 17. Uh, this beer is wholly relying on the dry hop addition to make up for any loss of bitterness because we're not actually doing boil. This might actually be a really sweet beer. We will see. I'm really curious uh, to see what happens because I've never done this before and I'm really, really excited. Nipas are my favorite uh, style of beer. So, okay, anyway. Um, so we're gonna do our hop stand uh, measuring first, but um, for our dry hops, we're actually gonna do two editions of dry hop. So right when I pitch the yeast, I'm going to put in two ounces of Amarillo and two ounces of HBC 586. And then three days later, um, so I'm towards the end of the like super high Krausen phase, we're gonna do another ounce of each Amarillo and HBC 586. Um, so hopefully that will give us a wide range of the flavors the hops can produce. So when we put them in early, we're getting a lot of biotransformation from the yeast and the hops interacting and releasing a lot of flavors that you can't get when you dry hop later. Okay, so for our hop stand, let's go ahead and measure it out. Um, I know I have just about an ounce of this. Galaxy. Galaxy always smells like cat pee to me. Perfect. Oh, um, no. Whatever. Screw that back. All right, two ounces of HBC 586. You can tell my galaxy's a little old, it's a little yellow. Also, if you want super green, fresh hops, I suggest ordering from Yakima Valley. Their hops are always so much greener than if you get them from like a online retailer of like all brewing supplies, but you know, it's coming right from the source. Okay, and then two ounces of Amarillo. Shit, that's a lot of hops. That's five ounces of hops going in at once. Okay, so that's the hop stand. I'm gonna write that on there. 174 degrees. Oh, and our hop stand's gonna be 10 minutes at 174. So we're gonna just kind of hold it there and let it do its magic. Okay, and this is gonna be our day one dry hop. So I'm gonna throw this in pretty much right when I pitch the yeast. Um, I hope I remember. So that's what usually happens is I forget. So two ounces of each. So many hops. Oh, I can't wait to drink this beer. This is gonna be one of those beers that you gotta drink super fresh, but I'm going out of town again <laughs> for like two weeks. Woo. So when I dry hop, um, I am gonna throw them in a hop bag because yeah, I just want to. So it's my brewery, it's my rules. We have our insane amount of hops. That's what Anipa is all about, man. So. I think we're I think we're gonna end up with a fucking great beer. I love hoppy beers. Oh, especially when they're juicy. I'm stoked. All right, let's go brew. Okay, so we're about 10 minutes away from the boil ends. I put in my chiller. Um, finally connected a hose long enough to actually go to a plant so I don't have to carry it. Um, I'm throwing in a Wurflock tablet and a little bit of yeast nutrient to get this guy going and uh, once we start chilling is when we're gonna add our first hop addition at 174 degrees and it's gonna be weird okay so it's been 60 minutes I'm gonna go ahead and kill my flame and I'm gonna start this chiller up real slow so we can kind of control how fast it chills so we can stop it at 174 Okay, we're on our way to 174. We're at 176 right now. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and toss these hops in. We've got one ounce of Galaxy, two ounces of Amarillo, and two ounces of HBC 586. We're gonna let these sit at this temperature for 10 minutes, and then we're gonna continue chilling. And then um, once it's all done chilling down to around 70 degrees, if we can get there, um, I'm gonna haul it upstairs, transfer it into my catalyst, set up my glycol system, and do our first dry hop. A lot of things happening. So many hops! I'm gonna go ahead and stir this to get them all mixed in and set my timer. 
So I guess it is kind of a whirlpool since I am spinning it. it smells amazing. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes and I'm just gonna turn the chiller back on and get this guy down. Okay, so this is at around 80 degrees or so. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it in the catalyst and uh, put the glycol chiller on to 65 and let it sit for a few minutes to cool down for the yeast pitch. Um, so now what I'm going to do is take a solo mission up my stairs with five gallons of wort in a pot. Wish me luck. Okay, somehow I did that without crying or losing any beer. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and transfer it into my catalyst. Um, this has already been sanitized, but I'm gonna drain the sanitizer from the bottom and attach a sanitized mason jar to the bottom as well. Okay, so this has the chilling coil in it, as you can see. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this chiller and make it 65 degrees. It smells so good. This is probably the best smelling beer I've ever made. So I'm gonna toss my hops in here and I just realized it, that that means I gotta open the lid, unfortunately. But this is our two ounces of Amarillo and two ounces of HBC 586 that we're gonna do in dry hop. So I'm gonna just gonna loosely tie this so they have room to expand. And I guess I'll open this super sanitized fermenter, unfortunately. This is my Safale 05 with just a little bit of starter, about 800 milliliters of starter. So I'm gonna take an original gravity reading straight from the fermenter. Okay, so we got 16 bricks for our original gravity. That seems a little high. I think we were supposed to get 15.1 bricks for it to be 1.064. So we might have overshot that a bit. I'm gonna throw this guy back in so we can put our temp probe. So once this is down to 65 degrees, I'm gonna go ahead and pitch my yeast. Okay, so it is at about 72 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and pitch the yeast. It'll just keep getting colder until I hit 65. So, you know, the yeast will be fine. Um, wardrobe change, it's been a minute. <laughs> and going to go ahead and sanitize this funnel so we can actually get it in there if I can get this to stop spraying everything. And this is Safale 05. Okay, so we're just gonna let this hang out. Okay, so it is day three on this NEPA and I'm gonna do my second dry hop edition. So this is one ounce of Amarillo and one ounce of HBC 586. This should give us even more aromatics like in com combination with our first dry hop edition. So this is now gonna add up to six ounces of dry hops, which is out of control. Uh, there's still a ton of Krausen in here. Um, I'm gonna try to give you guys a little peek if the camera will allow me to. Well, yeah, so that's the end of this video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, like and subscribe. Uh, we're gonna do the review coming up shortly. Now I'm gonna show you what this looks like inside. We let slip. <laughs> oh no! Oh, this is what you should have used for your fucking vagina slime. This is just sugar water. It's it's oatmeal is what's really doing it. So that's you know that's what we use, right? We use oatmeal water. Really? That's basically what this is. That's awesome. So this what it, this is literal vagina slime. Should be. Um, I'm sure that'll go over super well. Ha, 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 ha.
Wait, you know that's my tagline, right? Oh my god, I thought you were Yes! <laughs> that's my on all my bios it's I wanna be the Martha Stewart of home brewing. That's hilarious. You are the Martha Stewart. I totally thought you knew when you I did that. too. I was like, haha, funny joke. That's hilarious though. Oh you are. I love it. So isn't this nice? Wouldn't you like to have this centerpiece on your Thanksgiving table? Yes. This wouldn't you like to have this Nipa on your Thanksgiving table, surrounded by gourds? Yes. This vagina slime brew. <laughs> anyway. Fuck. Yes, I am aware that this is what I get for trying to be clever and extending my hose and not letting it go slow enough. But I don't want to carry buckets of water around the courtyard, so I'm going to keep doing it and just run it slower.